Hello, welcome back. And of course, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy, and in today's episode of Halloween Spooktacular, I'm going to tell some stories of flesh-eating plants. So stay tuned. So the topic of today's video might actually remind you of that movie called Little Shop of Horrors. In that movie, a man has actually a man-eating plant. But it is just so far-fetched and so out there. The movie is actually even a little comical because of the way that they do it. So if that is the type of idea you have of man-eating plants, well, you might be a little surprised to find out about some real-life accounts of man-eating plants from different parts of the world. So... In this video, I just wanted to go over some things that I learned during some research when I was researching the weird things in the world for Halloween Spooktacular. I came across some instances of man-eating plants and some people who had encountered them. So one of them was in 1878. It was a, a German explorer who was named Carl Litch. He traveled to an island of Madagascar, and that's where he witnessed an actual sacrifice of a woman to a tree. It sounds crazy, but in the monster book, I can um, actually share his account with you now. So, um, the horrific details were actually laid out in a letter that was penned by Carl Litch himself, and he sent it to the South Australian Register in 1881. So it's like he wanted to tell the world about this. Um, so here's what he said. The slender, delicate palpi with the fury of starved serpents quivered a moment over her head. Then, as if instinct with demoniac intelligence fastened upon her in sudden coils round and round her neck and arms, then, while her awful screams and yet more awful laughter rose wildly to the instantly strangled, rose wildly to be instantly strangled down again into a gurgling moan, the tendrils, one after another, like great green serpents, with brutal energy and infernal rapidity, rose, retracted themselves, and wrapped her about in fold after fold, ever tightening with cruel swiftness and savage tenacity of anacondas fastening upon their prey. Wow. <laughs> so, that's creepy. So, I, evidently, this woman, he says that the woman was kind of like a sacrifice to the tree because he actually witnessed her being eaten by the tree in the way that he described in that letter, but she was actually tied to the tree. And then it states that researcher Brent Swanser says of the flesh-devouring tree that it was described as being around eight feet in height and having an appearance reminiscent of a pineapple with eight long pointed leaves that hung down from its top to the ground. The trunk of the tree was topped with a sort of receptacle that contained a thick liquid said to have sporific qualities that drugged potential prey and was believed to be highly addictive. Surrounding the receptacle were long hairy tendrils with six white palpi resembling tentacles. The tree possessed white transparent leaves that reminded Lich of the quivering mouth parts of an insect. So, that was kind of a description of the tree and how it 
devoured the woman as um, some kind of seeming sacrifice to the tree. Um, and that, again, was in the island of Madagascar, where that was witnessed by this person in um, 1878. But again, he actually wrote this letter to the Australian Register, South Australian Register, in 1881. So he did have a little time in between um, the actual event and then telling the world about it. So... Now, moving on, there was another article in American Weekly on January 4th, 1925, which included an article titled, Escape from the Embrace of the Man-Eating Tree. <laughs> so this is describing an encounter in the Philippines in which a man referred to as Bryant from Mississippi, um, he had a native guide. He and a native guide in the Philippines came across this unusual tree. So this one, they state, was around 35 feet in height and roughly 90 feet in diameter. So this one is a very large tree um, compared to the other one of only eight feet high. Um, but nonetheless, the tree also was reported to stink of rotting flesh. Um, and a human skull could be seen at the base. Now, here's what the American Weekly said what happened. Um, so the man was standing by the tree and he realized that it was reaching out to him. So here's what happened. The whole thing had changed shape and was horribly alive and alert. The dull, heavy leaves had sprung from their complex compact formation and were coming at him from all directions, advancing on the ends of long vine-like stems which stretched across like the necks of innumerable geese. And now that the old man had stopped his screaming, the air was full of hissing sounds. The leaves did not move straight at their target, but with a graceful side-to-side -side sway like a cobra about to strike. From the far side, the distant leaves were peeping and swaying on their journey around the trunk, and even the treetop was bending down to join in the attack. The bending of the tree trunk was spasmatic and accompanied by sharp cracks. Oh my god, you guys, that would be... I don't even know what I would do if the trees started moving towards me. But these... These accounts are like the tree is actually moving and trying to eat you. <laughs> so this is serious. Um, and then it says here, the effect of this advancing and swaying mass of green objects was hypnotic, like the charm movements of a snake. Bryant could not move, though the nearest leaf was within an inch of his face. He could see that it was armed with sharp spines on which a liquid was forming. He saw the heavy leaf curve like a green mitten hand, and as it brushed his eyebrow in passing, he got the smell of it. The same animal smell that hung in the surrounding air. Another instant, and the thing would have had his eyes in its sticky, prickly grasp, but either his weakness or the brown man's strength threw, him bo threw them both on their backs. The charm was broken. They crawled out of the circle of death and lay panting in the grass while the malignant plant, cracking and hissing, yearned and stretched and thrashed to get at them. So even after they were out of the tree's reach, it was still trying to get them. That is so creepy. Okay, you guys. Now, I know it sounds a little fantastical, but it does state here in the monster book that it's important to note that this article was written for the American Weekly and by a very credible source. The person who uh, wrote the article was a botanist, naturalist named Willard Nelson Clute, who is the author of numerous books, including The Useful Plants of the World and also a Dictionary of American Plant Names. Who knows? Perhaps the deadly people-eating plant of the Philippines still exists. <laughs> All right, so this botanist, Willard Nelson Clute, is a professor and founder of the American Fern Society, and he's the one that wrote about this dangerous 
flesh-eating plant in the Philippines. So honestly, he seems to be um, well-educated about plants in the area, in the world. Um, so you never know. And of course, um, we have that first encounter. Where was that? Madagascar. So these stories are coming from all different parts of the world, and they all describe a tree that is a flesh man-eating tree. So what do you guys think about this? Do you think that these are just some crazy stories that some explorers came up with? I don't know. All I can say is there are so many unusual things in and around our planet that you can never be quite sure. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Be sure to tell us your take on the whole man-eating plants, and do you think it's possible? Or do you think these are just crazy stories that someone came up with in the 1800s? All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.